Well, I, you know what? I was going to do this really nice presentation. I went out there, and I, I think this group's going to appreciate this um, more so. I, I was so impressed with Terry's presentation last week, so I went out there. My guys are working. I was going to talk about cooling systems, and I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes. I went out there with my phone camera, and I'm videotaping the radiator being nice. replaced in the reservoir bottle and going on. and. Sexy. Yeah. And I go in to download it on my computer, and guess what? I shut it off when I was recording, and when I thought I was stopping it, it's when I was just walking around talking to them. So I said, this group will appreciate that. We're just going to wing it today. So um, there we are. But uh, Val and Mike's Auto Service, we are a AAA approved uh, auto repair shop. We are a smog and repair station. And we have, uh, of course, a smog technician. And we have ASC certified technicians there. We have actually two master techs. We have Dan and my husband, Mike. Uh, they have many years of experience in the business. And why is that important? Um, today, cars are very technical. I mean, you don't even know what's going to be happening down the road here and how sophisticated the cars are and the computer computers that are in them. And, uh, you know, the repairs are going to be less, but when they break down, it's going to be a very technical situation. When you start taking your cars to a mechanic, you know, it, it's going to have to be someone that's computer savvy. Um, it's going to be almost to an engineer level. And then we're talking way down in the future, but that's what's coming up uh, in, you know, the uh, near future or coming up. And you need to continue to help your technicians to realize that and keep them educated. And that is one thing that we do. And, uh, for example, just the young man that I have working for me right now, he's a, a porter, I guess you would say. He, uh, he wants to be a technician, and he's learning how to change oils. And we're paying for his uh, schooling at Golden West College. They have a great automotive. And so that's what we do. Uh, is help and encourage uh, along with you know making sure they get their ASC testing and anytime there is any classes in regards to technical so we can keep up on that. The reason why that's so important too is that cars, you know, they don't talk to us. When you go to the doctor you say, oh I got a pain in my side and they're gonna let you know if it's gas or if it's appendicitis, you know, that you know they're <laughs> But cars do not do that. They, uh, a lot of their symptoms mimic each other. And for example, when you, uh, we have a car, it has a check engine light. And I can, check engine light is very involved. But for example, if it's the catalytic converter and that code comes up, you know, we replace the catalytic converter, but further testing has to be done because there was a reason why that catalytic converter failed. And one of the reasons is a lot of times the O2 sensors but the computer doesn't see that right away. They see what the immediate failure is, replace that, then it would be the O2 sensors. A lot of times the O2 sensors are okay. We are not in the business to replace parts just to replace parts. A lot of dealers um, will uh, go ahead and just replace the catalytic converter and the O2 sensors. That way they don't have the customer coming back saying, you didn't fix my problem. That you know, sometimes the O2 sensors will be okay, so we might as well just let the customer drive it for a while, see if everything you know is okay, and go from there. Let's see. As I mentioned, we have to make sure our techs are savvy. You know, just with you know computer diagnostics, uh, electronics, and uh, their uh, you know, and we talked about education. Uh, one of the things we uh, pride ourselves in our shop and in our business is we like to be problem solvers. And it is a process, and it takes time to diagnose cars. And I'm going to give you a few examples of this. And just recently, these people just recently came in the last two days, so they're nice and fresh in my mind here. <laughs> but uh, we had, and I had it on my Facebook, I don't know if you saw it, but we had a car towed in. Uh, a 19, uh, it was a Toyota Camry, I can't remember the year, but uh, he would, waited for the tow truck, the tow truck broke down. The tow truck axles, the wheel broke while he was driving the car. You talk about a hairy ride. And then 
the tow truck got towed. So we had a, a two tow trucks with a car behind it. But anyway, the first thing was he had overheating problems. Uh, he's a regular customer, so you know he had that trust with us. Um, the initial diagnosis, of course, was uh, a radiator and a power. Uh, excuse me, a, a, water. a water pump. Thank you. And uh, one of the things that you know, after you know, looking at it, and we actually got the authorization to do those repairs. But we wanted to make sure, because the car did overheat, before we even did those repairs, make sure there wasn't any further problems with it. And so they did a, a block test um, before doing that and found out the head gasket um, was blown. So with that, Mike was able to call him and give him his options so he could make an informed decision. And he decided to get another car. But he came in appreciating that. Because a lot of other shops, you know, they would replace the radiator, they would replace the water pump, and then drive it, and the customer might not have an overheating problem for maybe, what, a month or so down the road, and then all of a sudden it started overheating, and that's when the, um, you know, the head gasket would have been identified. Uh, we also had a young man uh, that uh, had a, a Ford Ranger coming from Fullerton. He was a guy that loved to live on the edge. Man, that car was overheating. He'd stop, let it cool down, put some water in it, turn the heater on, drive a little ways. And he did that until he got back to Huntington Beach. And so, so new customer, now that one was really scary because that, that could have done some very um, major engine uh, damage. So from uh, there, uh, the radiator just had a huge crack in it. And, you know, that was obvious, absolutely obvious. But, uh, and we replaced that. But then we had to test drive it, and then it had an engine miss. Now, we needed to do further diagnosis on that just because was that coolant that got on the, um, you know, spark plug wires causing that, it, you know, eventually would dry out and be okay? Or were they arcing? And then after that, they were finding out that, you know, it was actually, he needed spark plug wires also. He chose not to do that, and that's fine. At least we were able to tell him, document it, and that can be something that will save us pennies for at another time. But it takes time <coughs> with the, the car. So being a new customer, he kept calling me, did you figure out what, what's wrong with my car yet? Did you figure out what's wrong with my car yet? You know, and, you know, I had to explain to him the process. It's also important to know that after you do a huge cooling system like that, you have to let that car sit, and I call it burping the car. All the air has to purge out um, of the system so you don't have an air pocket in there to cause it to overheat. So again, time is so important to just get your car done right and safe. And this is a customer that just happened. She spent about, about I have two minutes, thank you, uh, about uh, a half hour of my time. <coughs> and uh, she was at a very reputable shop down on Beach Boulevard. I have really nothing to say, they, they're a great shop. Uh, she spent $800 uh, distributor cap, cap and rotor, uh, distributor, spark plugs, wires. She, in the car, uh, was still doing it. She brought it back there. They re did the whole jobs all over again, still doing it. She comes into my shop and she says, I'm giving you one hour to figure out what's wrong with my car. And, you know, and I said, I can't do that. You, you know, there is a serious problem here. And it's so hard to, you know, have people understand that. And uh, I, I couldn't help her. I offered to get her a rental car. I offered to take her to her doctors. I offered to take her to the, you know, her home, whatever she wanted. But no, she needed her car. She wanted diagnosed within an hour. And it just, it doesn't happen. And that's when you have to say, you know, you need to, you know, go elsewhere or go back to where you originally, because they are a reputable shop. So um, it's easy for us to fix cars. It really is. We just need the time. And, and uh, what we've developed is, you know, connecting with the customer. We're building relationships. We've done that for the last 21 years um, and, and have great customers. And, you know, we appreciate that and getting new customers on the Internet. Uh, we've had over 21 years of business. Uh, and. Um, we stand behind our work. We're 2424 nationwide. We're there five days a week, Monday through Friday, uh, 7:30 to 5:30. And there I am. <laughs> Yay! Yay.